Floors and ceilings can be added either to the 2D drawing or right to the 3D model. The same is true with just about any object in Vertex BD. It's just a matter of personal preference and the situation. In this video, I'll go through both examples. First, I'll add the main floor right to the 3D model, using the walls as a guide for the shape of the floor. So I'll start with the floor function. I'm going to select the floor that we have set as our default floor system in the 3D levels and I can just hit this default floor button to automatically find that default floor system. So I can see I have the 2x10 with the 3 quarter inch plywood. I'll click OK and by default Vertex goes to the adding by points method which is useful when you're adding in the 2D layout. But here I'm going to switch to add using walls and I'm going to click on one of my exterior walls and I'll see I'll get a green line that's going along the exterior framing line of that wall. You can see down in the status bar line is exterior and the offset is zero. So right now this, this floor boundary will be going flush to that exterior framing line. You can control which line the floor will go to by selecting the reference line button and then you can change to a different line that's in the selected wall. You can also set an offset from the selected line. But I'm going to keep exterior with an offset of zero. I can then select the next exterior wall and continue to select all the walls around or I can use the linked walls button that will automatically find the wall chain and select all the walls all the way around. When they're all selected I can hit confirm and then the floor is added. To do the floor cover I'm going to use the 2D method because the shapes are a little more complicated and I don't have a continuous wall chain around my room areas. So I'll switch back to the 2D and I'm going to select a different floor type. So I'm going to hit select material, select the floor finish, and I'll start with the hardwood floor. Click OK. I also want to make sure that this floor is going to be raised up a little bit so that it sits right on top of the subframe. So to do that, I'm going to select the horizontal area by bottom plane. And then I want to make sure that that bottom plane is sitting flush on the first floor deck. So I'm going to change this offset value to be zero so that the bottom of my floor finish is sitting on the Z equals zero height, which happens to be the top of the subfloor. So I click OK. I'm going to switch back to the add using points method. And now I can zoom in and I can select the interior finished corners around each room. I can also pass through the doorways. So I'm going to continue this floor right through into the hallway, into this closet here as well. Around the kitchen I'm going to go under the fridge and around the cabinets. And when you selected the last point, you can just hit confirm. And then I'll take a look at the 3D model and see what this looks like. Now if I left click to select that floor, you can see all the edge points. I want to cut out a little hole around this middle section here. So I'm going to go back to the 2D, select my finish layer, and then I can right click and select create hole. This allows me to select points 
around a hole and then confirm. So now I have that little hole cut out for the interior wall there. I'm going to do the same for the bathroom area except this time I'll add a tile floor. So we'll go to insert floor, select material, flooring finish tile, and click around the interior finish lines. I'm also going to go into the laundry area. And then we'll take a look at that in 3D. One common mistake is drawing your floor areas in your wall layout when you should be using your deck layout. No problem, you can just move those floors to the correct drawing. I'm going to activate my model tab down in the bottom left. So now I can see the model tree. I'm going to select the three floor areas, right click, go to advanced and move to another drawing model pair. Now I can select the first level deck layout. If I click yes that'll leave this drawing model pair active and now I have those floor areas moved to the correct drawing. The 3D model will look the same. It's just now that those objects are in a separate 2D drawing. It helps organizing your drawing sheets a little bit easier. And before I start drawing my ceilings, I'm going to remember to switch to the ceiling layout. So I'm going to select Open Drawing Model Pair, and I'm going to go to First Level Ceiling Layout. Now we can see a reference drawing of the first level walls, and we can use that as a guide to create the ceiling layout. The easiest method is to just add one continuous ceiling across the entire layout. Or, to get a more accurate material collection, we can just add the drywall areas within each room inside the finished areas. We're going to use the more accurate method in this example. We'll select ceiling, and I'm going to select the half inch drywall, click OK. We're going to locate this by the top plane with an offset of zero. Click OK and then click around the interior corners of each room. Rectangular rooms only need the two opposite corners and then hit confirm. We can add the cutouts for the stairwells the same way as we cut out the hole in the floor finish area earlier. I'm going to select the ceiling area, right click and select create hole. Now it's waiting for us to select some points to define the shape of the hole. Again, if it's a rectangle, I just need two opposite corners. If it's anything other than a rectangle, you can select as many points as needed. In this case, I'm just going to do a rectangular hole for the stairwell. I'm going to measure off of this corner in the top right. I'll hit Q, lock in the horizontal direction by hitting U on the keyboard. And I'm going to go to the left, 13 feet, 6 and 1 half inches. And now the hole is going to be 45 inches wide by 11 feet long. So I'm going to hold my cursor so it's just the plus sign. And then start typing in minus 45 in the x direction, comma, and we're going to go minus 11 feet in the y direction and click OK. So that makes the second point and then I hit confirm and that adds my rectangular opening. I'll hit escape. 
I'm going to switch back to the deck drawing and we can add the hole to the floor. Since we have a framed floor system plus the floor finishing layer, we can select both of those and then just add one hole to cut through both floors. So to do that, we can switch to the model tree, go to planar structures, and I'm going to select on these floors to figure out which ones I need to select. So I see that I need to select the first and second floor systems. Then I can right click and select create hole. And again, I'm going to select the top right corner of this room as my reference point. So I'll hit Q, lock in the horizontal by hitting U. This time the hole is going to be 13 feet and 11 inches. And then from there, we can go minus 36 inches in the X direction and minus 11 feet in the Y direction. Hit confirm and then escape. If I take a look at this in 3D, I can see the hole in the ceiling and rotate up here. I'll see the holes in both the framed floor and the finish layer. We can also hide that ceiling there. I'm going to hold my cursor over the ceiling and hit H. And now I can see the hole in the floor there from above.